On the left, we have Ace King. We raise under the gun. We get Freebird by middle position, which usually is meant to be strong, but I found that a lot of people are Freebirding light here. We get the dream spot where we can attack the cold call. This is always going to be capped. This is going to be very, very, very rarely aces. Um, player two is making a lot of mistakes here. I think if you're going to flat out the small blind versus an under the gun open and an MP3 bet, you should probably just fold most of those hands. Anyway, we get an easy spot here to four bet and player two decides to rip it. We obviously call, always happy to call off here. And we spike a king against queens, which I think queens should be squeezing, so... We have 5-4 of spades in the big blind, and we decide to 3-bet. And on this flop, this is going to be a triple at a very high frequency. We have the gut shot, and we have 5 high. We unblock uh, diamonds, so this is a pretty easy triple. Uh, I'm not sure how much I like waiting the turn here. Maybe this could be one of the cards that we give up on. We do have a double gutter now, so um, this is a spot I need to look at. I'm not exactly sure what I should do here. I do decide to bet. Now, when player 4 flats, I'm pretty unhappy. However, we just bink the deuce on the river. Um, as played, we definitely have to jam. We can stack good ace x and sets, and in this scenario, we stack a set of nines. On the right, we decide to cold 4-bet the ace and of clubs. I wouldn't do this very often. I do this uh, very infrequently. I think I decided to do it here because player 4 uses a smaller 3-bet size, which generally means they're a weaker player. Um, should be betting, should be betting to at least $18 here if you're player 4. Uh, I expect player 4 to just rip it here with all their good cards. However, they decide to flat. Um, because we flop the nuts, I prefer to check and trap here. I don't think player 4 has ace-king. Should be getting that in pre. Um, and then player 4 just ships it here and actually does show ace-king. So we trap ace-king. On the left, we have sevens facing a three bet. I decide to flat in position and we see a flop of three, ace, seven. We flop a set, middle set, pretty happy. Um, Play 6 should have a lot of ace x here, so we should get at least 2 streets. They're also going to probably bluff here at least 2 streets on an ace high board, so I'm pretty happy. I flat the flop, and the turn is a 9 of spades. This actually brings quite a few bluffs to player 6's range. There should be more spades, spades continuing, and the jack 10 suited combos should continue. Uh, the river is an 8 non spades, probably one of the best rivers. Uh, we get put in a disgusting spot here. Player 6 actually overbet jams. I don't think the regs are correctly tripling here with bluffs and probably not value jamming ace king here. So I get owned and we get stacked. On the left table, we have ace king in a pretty easy squeeze spot. We're on the button, we should be perceived to be light squeezing here. So I'm pretty happy to get it in against either one of these players. Play one is uh, a little bit deeper, so it's probably not that great if we get it in against player one, but it's alright. Uh, play six flats, which I think is a mistake with their stack size. They should just be getting it in here. Uh, we do flop a very, very good flop. There is an ace of four and queen of all clubs. I actually don't mind checking here, but I decide to bet. I think player 6 is a weaker player through uh, just by their stack size. I think they're going to call at least one street with an ace, a king, uh, sorry, a queen. And maybe even like jacks with a club, 10 with a club that didn't want to jam pre. Uh, we turn the nut flush. I actually check here as I think. Um, we can induce some bluffs on the river by checking this turn. Uh, I actually think player 6 will turn a lot of their pairs into a bluff on this river. Um, and we set the trap and player 6 does fall for it. They do decide to jam the river. I probably wouldn't fold a club here, so if I somehow had like, I don't know, a 10 of clubs, I would definitely call. On the right table, we have queens. We threw it under the gun, and under gun decides to flat. Pretty good flop for queens. We have an overpair to the board. I do bet. I'd like to see myself bet a little bit bigger here. There's uh, quite a few draws, and we unblock spades, so there's a possibility to have spades. Uh, we bet the turn, and we get called pretty quickly. The river is pretty good. They shouldn't have that many 9x, maybe like 9, 10 suited, two combos. 
Uh, we decide to jam here, thin value jam, and we actually get called by Jax. Hunt of the day is a blind versus blind spot. We three bet the seven eight of clubs. Um, we get flattered by the small blind, and the flop comes king jack nine. It's a pretty good board for our uh, range. We have kings, jacks, nines, queen ten suited, ace king, king jack suited, and aces. I decide to bet, and we get called. Now the turn, I wasn't sure if I want to check or bet. I think tripling here provided that player 5 doesn't jam the turn, is going to be a pair plus gut shot or pair plus flush draw. The fact that we have 7 8 clubs is irrelevant, we just don't want to block a jack of clubs, a queen of clubs, a 10 of clubs. And I decide to jam here, I think player 5's range is super weak, uh, population are unbalanced, they're going to be jamming their turns with their strong hands. And player 5 calls with probably the worst call down combo. I actually have so many value hands here and we get called by Queen which is super frustrating. 